seen before. You can feel vibrations in the vehicle, and so it's uh, it's quite a magical uh, couple. Two minutes, uh, two minutes of riding up uphill in first stage. All right, we are inside one minute now. I just want to tell you the voices you're going to be hearing as this uh, discovery makes its way towards space. Adler Butel is a public affairs officer here in the Launch Control Center. He'll hear him first, and then it'll switch over to Houston. Rob Navius, public affairs officer there, will be providing us some key data points uh, as this all unfolds. Uh, as we reach the point of uh, 30 seconds, Doug, things start happening very quickly and automatically. Now. Absolutely. At T-minus 31 seconds, control is handed over to the shuttle onboard computers and uh, we're at that point right now and uh, and and the shuttle is is on its way now there is uh, systems in place to uh, if we need to do a pad aboard or abort the launch uh, that can be done but the shuttle is in, in complete control now all right let's listen now 10 seconds we have go from the engine start seven six five four three two one Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Discovery. Kambate Kudasai. Best of luck to the International Space Station's newest laboratory. Houston and Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made rising sun on behalf of Japan. Discovery on the proper alignment, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. Six seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery already five miles in altitude, eight and a half miles downrange, traveling almost a thousand miles an hour. Discovery Houston, go with throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Mark Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Ken Ham, flight engineer Ron Garan, and mission specialist Karen Nyberg. Down on the mid deck are Mike Fossum, Aki Hoshide, and Greg Shamatov, heading for a half year on the International Space Station. And this is a key part of the whole situation here, Doug, where you've got these those twin uh, solid rocket boosters still attached. Once you light those solid rocket boosters, uh, there's no turning them off. Right? That's, a, that's exactly right, Miles. There's, it's, it's solid fuel. You can't throttle these things. One minute. And uh, so you essentially are long for the ride when you're on these boosters. And so there is a collective sigh of relief at about two, uh, two minutes and five seconds when we get off the boosters. We're waiting that moment now. And when that happens, there's a collective sigh of relief, although we still have six more minutes uh, to ride to space. And the amount of acceleration there is really hard to comprehend when you consider going from that launch pad zero to 17,500 miles an hour. Uh, do you feel that acceleration, though? Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. You do. You feel it. It's a there goes the solid thing. rocket boosters. That's solid a good sign right there. That's, that's a very good sign now. And actually, this occurs at about 150,000 feet at Mach 5. Very little drag up there, and now you can feel the full force, uh, full thrust of those shuttle main engines. It really presses you back in your seat at, uh, at uh, three times uh, gravity, essentially three of yourself sitting on your chest. Now, is, is, it, is it hard to breathe? It is. Is it a little bit difficult to breathe? Is it a little bit mechanical? Uh, it's equally as hard to reach out and actuate a switch or something if you need uh, so if the crew, uh, it sounds like we have a very, very clean ascent, the crew is probably checking their uh, reach, reachability of different switches in case they need to actuate something. And so uh, there's a pretty good uh, force on the crew now as they push back in their seats. Now we're looking at this shot, which is the external fuel tank camera, looking back at the orbiter. And of course, you see the curvature of the Earth, the darkness of space. That camera, while it's uh, wonderful for us to go along for the ride, is there for really some engineering and safety reasons. They want to make sure that big pieces of that foam, which insulates the external fuel tank, don't fall off, causing damage to those uh, thermal protection tiles on the belly of the shuttle. I have not seen anything big fall off there. This will be something they'll be pouring over, though, for yeah, the hours and days to come. Absolutely, Miles. And you can also see, in that view, you can see the leading edge of the wings of the shuttle as well, which is reinforced carbon-carbon, uh, that we also uh, want to take a look to see if there's anything that impacts those uh, leading edge of those wings. This looks very clean and uh, 
and, uh, and it looks like a very, very clean ride to orbit. All right, we're about three minutes in now, and three minutes, 40 seconds or so, and as they go up, as they build altitude, and as they build speed, their options, if something goes wrong, increase, correct? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. They can, instead of having to come back here for an emergency landing, they start thinking about possibly an emergency landing, say, in Europe. Absolutely. We have a, what, what's called a tail site. It's a transatlantic landing site. And we have several of those in Europe uh, that we can uh, we can abort to uh, to a landing site in, uh, across the pond. Of course, it's never had to ha it never happened. The other one uh, abort to orbit years ago, as I recall, when an engine shut down prematurely and ended up doing the mission. But what you're thinking about the entire time as you go uh, up to space is what happens if something goes wrong. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. You're totally in the totally in the uh, training mode at that point, and you're. You're reviewing all your procedures, you're looking at what the vehicle is telling you on your uh, screens and on your uh, gauges and dials, and, uh, and the crew, the crew is uh, decisively engaged in what's going on, what the vehicle is telling you. And our apologies as the helicopter, which provides security here, lands as it does at this time and in every case. So far, I've not heard a single thing, any calls from the ground or to the crew that would indicate anything that's going wrong here. Absolutely. Sounds perfectly clean, Miles. That's what, good news. And as it goes up, as you get to this point, they call it, it's a much smoother ride when you've lost those solid rocket boosters. But the G-forces, this is when you really, they build up and you really start to feel it, You right? can really feel the power of those uh, shuttle main engines. Each one of those engines produces about 13 million horsepower and a pretty good amount of thrust. So about a, a 375,000 pounds of thrust each. And so you can uh, you essentially have little drag at this altitude. And so you can feel the full po uh, power of those engines pressing you back in your seat. All right. At this now, what they said there was press to ATO. Let's decipher that. What does that mean? It's, it's essentially uh, uh, it's an abort, abort uh, boundary where we, we know that if we, if we lose an engine, we can abort to orbit. ATO is abort to orbit. So if we lose an engine, all three shuttle main engines are uh, functioning properly. But if we lost an engine, we can make it uh, to orbit. So that's that, that's a good call when you hear that. That's one, a I'm very imagine. good call. That's a very good call. We can, we can now make it to orbit if we lose one engine. But you still want to get to the space station so those engines continue to pop for the full eight and a half minutes. Absolutely. And now it that begins this roll program. What we that's can, about communication, isn't it? Explain how that works. Yes, sir. Uh, on top of the space shuttle there are antennas that uh, we lay the shuttle on its back as we're uh, going through first stage up until about Mach 13 to 15. And um, those antennas are communicating communicating with ground sites up the east coast and in Bermuda as we as we cross the Atlantic. Once we get to this altitude we roll the heads up Roll the heads up, so the primary communication is now through the satellite. All right, so we're six minutes and 30 seconds into it, and the next call is going to be uh, single engine press to MECO. What does that mean? What okay. does that mean? Well, press to MECO, MECO means, is, stands for main engine cutoff, which is a good point to, to reach. It's, uh, it's actually the uh, the summit, if you will, of this uh, of the launch uh, attempt. And so uh, single engine press to this means that on one engine, if we lost two engines, we can make it to MECO. All right. So we're inside two minutes now, and what we're going to see is we're going to see this wonderful picture as the external fuel will tank once again be and the, out the, the stress on the uh, and orbiter separate. Of that and this is an important period of time gravity. because crew members like on board are assigned tasks here, one crew member in particular, to take right. pictures of the tank to see if any debris was created during this launch. Main engine cut off and a little more and you want to make sure that there isn't big pieces that came off, right? Absolutely. On my mission, I was responsible for taking video footage through the upper window of the external tank and the tail back to the Earth. And it's quite an amazing sight to see this thing uh, that uh, took you safely to orbit. And now traveling over 20,000 miles an hour. Of course, you're not feeling any of sense of speed. You're feeling the G-forces. What's interesting, I think, is that the maximum G-forces that you feel miles end very suddenly, don't they, when those engines cut off? They do. It's, a, it's instantaneous cut off and instantaneous zero G. And so you're, and you're really glad they strapped you in tightly. <laughs> and so suddenly you go from this pressure to zero G. What's that? that, that Discovery pass. I know that uh, some astronauts get sick, and you can understand why. That's a, that's a difficult transition. Your body, your body so adapts. Uh, some people adapt very, very quickly. Some people have delayed reaction uh, to the to the in uh, introduction to zero G. Standing, standing by for main, standing engine, by for main cut engine cutoff. That will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. And you'll hear a MECO call, which stands for main engine cutoff, and you'll have me hear MECO confirmed. What do you? What is that? That flaming we're seeing around there. What does that mean? It's, it's, 
Booster officer it's, confirms it's actually main the, engine uh, cutoff the, standing by the for external tank separation. Of the gases coming out of the shuttle main engines, you're, we're now essentially in space in a complete vacuum, and so that expansion is uh, behaves quite a bit differently than uh, than here on Earth or and here in our atmosphere. And there you watch that separation, that wonderful, almost it's almost a ghostly image external as the uh, uh, orbiter Discovery and the tank separate. It, it is you, you'll see uh, you'll see jets firing on the shuttle to move it away from the uh, external tank, and uh, then the the uh, shuttle will actually do a do a 180 degree. Uh, flip Kelly onto its back, and so you could see this external tank out the upper so windows. What, what, what was, what kind of a sight was that to see that? Can you believe where you were? It was amazing. It was amazing. It was, uh, there's a lot of, you have to keep focused on your work because there's a lot of wow factor. That was, that's just an amazing sight. All right, what you just witnessed was uh, textbook uh, getting to space in a space shuttle. Eight and a half minutes of uh, one wild ride. Amazing that it all comes together, really, when you think about all the things that have to go right. To, to have what happened just happen. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. All right. Tremendous experience. A word about this mission, putting on this Kibo laboratory. Significant milestone.